Welcome to episode 17, and uh, we're going to continue to build upon uh, that which we started in our last episode, where we really began to identify that there is an organic and very biblical relationship uh, between law and grace. It should be the natural response of every believer in Jesus who receives Jesus into their heart to step in to the law of God. And nay, I say, this is the expectation that God has when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, when you receive that free gift of grace. And so we're going to build upon this, and we're just going to continue to peel back layer after layer. And today, we're going to spend the entirety of this episode right within the law itself, within the Torah. And we're just going to see this principle reiterated time after time in a, in a very beautiful way. And so to get things started, I want to take you to Deuteronomy 15. And this is what we read. If your brother, a Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year, you shall let him go free from you. And so, you know, the, the, there's a principle. Deuteronomy 15 actually begins with this principle of the Shemitah meaning the year of release. So in the seventh year, uh, you were to have a release of debts. The whole concept of the seventh year is to be, to be, to be set free, to be delivered from bondage. And, and debt, as you know, can be great bondage. And so the chapter begins by, you know what, in the seventh year, you, there's to be a forgiveness of, of debt. Beautiful principle. This principle carries over into if you acquire a slave or a servant that's even of your own people, that same principle in the seventh year is to go free. I mean, we, we see, we actually can find this very same concept in the, in the Sabbath as well, because six days we are to do our work and labor, which according, if you go back to Genesis, it's the curse that was placed upon man because of, because of sin Man, the, the curse that man was to experience was uh, they're now going to have to labor and toil. But on the Sabbath, they're to be set free from the curse. And so it's just a, it's a beautiful picture. I mean, there's, you know, the, the Bible is very thematic, if you will, uh, especially when it comes to the number seven and deliverance and being set free. And so here we, we see in this particular part of, of, Deuteronomy 15, that we're, we're talking about setting your servant free in the seventh year. And you're supposed to bless them as they go out. But the simple point I want to make here is, as we go to verse 15, we actually are given the reason why they should do this. Now check this out. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. Did you get that? Okay, because God set them free, because God showed his grace, because he redeemed them, he delivered them, they are to abide by this law. They are to do it God's way. They are to walk in his law with his mind and his heart. This is why they're to obey the law. It has everything to do with grace. It is just, it's, it's amazing how we keep seeing this concept play out in Scripture. Now, jumping ahead to Deuteronomy 26, this is what we read. Today, you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God, and that you will walk in his ways and keep his statutes, his commandments, and his judgments, and that you will obey his voice. And so you look at this, and I love this because, you know, this has everything to do with the gospel. Did you get this? Right at the front end of verse 17, what did it say? It said, today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God. In other words, this is the day of confession. And, and we read in the prophet, Joel 2.32, it says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We're talking about the gospel. We're talking about receiving salvation. We're talking about entering into relationship with God, into covenant. And this is, this is very important, specifically attached to your confession that, God, I want to be in relationship with you. 
You've, I'm going to proclaim you to be my God. I'm going to proclaim Jesus as Lord. Attached to that very statement, which is a gospel statement, is the fact that your agreement, you will walk in his ways. And of course, he made his ways known to Moses, that you will keep his statutes, you would keep his commandments, his judgments, you would obey his voice. It's directly affixed to the gospel, to this confession. Now, as we continue, it even gets more beautiful, because look at what we read in the very next verse. Also today, the Lord has proclaimed you to be his special people. And I want to just stop here for a second, because this is amazing. There's, there's something so profound about the gospel right here that we need to appreciate. In verse 17, what did it say? It said, today you have proclaimed the Lord to be your God. In verse 18, it says, also, today the Lord has proclaimed you to be a special people. Now, I, I just have to stop here because you see the faithfulness of God, the assurance that the moment that you confess Jesus as Lord and you receive him into your heart, that is the very moment that God himself will declare you to be his son or to be his daughter. It is absolute guarantee when you do that with your whole heart and you confess him, he confesses you. That is, for me, that is just, it's beautiful to see the gospel and the reality, the truth of the gospel embedded right here. And so this assurance that when we lead people in a prayer to ask Jesus into their, Lord, into their heart to be Lord and Savior, we can communicate them even from the law we can show them in scripture, you're not to have a doubt because the moment you make that confession, know this, the Lord himself will confess you. And so I just, I can't help but stop here because this is such a, a beautiful aspect and a beautiful truth to the faithfulness of God. And so reading in verse 18, this is, this is what we read. Also today, the Lord has proclaimed to you to be a special people just as he promised you. Look at this that you should keep all his commandments. Again, I mean, it's back to back. You're coming into relationship with God and God is confessing you as a son, as a daughter for a purpose that you should keep all his commandments. This is what we are called to do. Now, jumping back to Deuteronomy 5, we read this, observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Okay, so we're dealing, we're in the Decalogue here. Deuteronomy 5 uh, records the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20 as well. Um, but here we're in the fourth commandment. And the, the, the commandment is Shemor et Yom HaShabbat, like how to show, you know, you're to guard. And here it's translated observe. But it's, it's Shemar in the Hebrew that is to guard the Sabbath day, specifically to keep it holy. All right? Now, here's what's fascinating. As you continue in the text, right embedded within the Ten Commandments, the Lord is going to tell you why you should keep the Sabbath. And we read this, jumping down to verse 15. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Did you get that? He's commanding his people to keep the Sabbath for one reason, because he showed them mercy because he set them free, because he redeemed them, because he delivered them, the expectation of God is, okay, now you're going to guard the Sabbath. You're going to zechor, you're going to remember to keep it holy. That's why we do it. And so there is this natural relationship. There is to be this natural response to the reception of grace. It's to walk in his law. It's to be obedient to his commandments. One more. I want to show you today, and that is in the book of Leviticus, and the Leviticus chapter 11, and this is the, the chapter of what you would call food loss, 
Leviticus 11, verse 44, we read the following. For I am the Lord your God. And that's interesting. You remember the whole concept of confession and entering into relationship with God is is based upon us confessing him. No, you are our God. And so the Lord comes out, I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore consecrate yourselves and you shall be holy for I am am holy. Why would we be holy? Why would we walk in holiness? Why would we walk in righteousness? Because our God is holy, because he's righteous. Neither shall you defile yourselves with any creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And you can go to Leviticus 11, and what it does is it talks about the foods you can eat, and it talks about the foods you cannot eat, and and, and unclean foods, right? To me, you know, things like swine and shellfish, etc., we're not to touch any of those things. We're to make a distinction between the clean and the unclean. Why should we do that? Why would any believer make a distinction between clean and unclean? Listen to this. For I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Why do we do this? Because God delivered his people. God gave grace to his people. Therefore, they're to do things God's way now. Again, shalach et ami ve'ya'avduni. You know what? Let my people go because they're going to serve me. They're, they're, they're going to bear witness to me. They're going to walk in my ways and, and they're going to have my heart and they're going to do the things that please me. And so over and over and over again, we see this beautiful template, this relationship just poured out over the pages of the Torah itself. That's all we have time for today. Uh, I hope I get to see you in the next episode because we're going to continue in this vein. The Lord bless you and keep you.